is there a different way though, right? We're just taught this is how it is. You know, there is a different way, and I could go on and on about them. I only want to give you one example. Local eight of the industrial works of the world, before, during, and after World War I, the Philadelphia docks, which were an incredibly important port in this country, incredibly important in the world, that is, um, it was organized by the Wabus. It's remarkable for so many reasons, this union. It was the the highest example of multiracial unionism. Longshore, work, and unions were viciously racist, and anyone here who knows about the history of Philadelphia has one of the worst histories of, 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 of racism um, out there, period. Um, local aid, through this multiracial model, integrated the work itself, work of unloading the boats, the membership of the union, and the leadership itself. Some folks here may have heard of Benjamin Fletcher, the legendary wobbly African-American leader of Local 8, who was caught up in a large-scale indictment. Uh, another form of the law we won't have time to get into, but it just represses you, uh, 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 which was a, one of the largest indictments, I think, for conspiracy uh, at the time, ever. Um, Local 8, they didn't sign contracts, brothers and sisters. They didn't do contracts. But they had the best conditions in the industry. The, the b very best conditions. How did they do it? Everyday direct action and everyday solidarity. One question that comes up all the time when I talk about local aid is how do they close the shop, right? We close the shop now with the contract. You work at a company, right to work state, this is all very different, let's just say New York. You close the shop in the contract, you gotta join the union. How do you close the shop when there's no contract? Well, let me tell you how local aid did it. They closed the, the shop by, you had to wear a pin, IWW pin, right? And it showed if you were in good standing, if you were a member, and if you were in good standing. So you come, you report to work, you got your pin, it's fine. What happens when a non-union worker shows up to work? Simple, join the union, fellow worker. It's a union shop here. Right. No, no, come on, do it. He refuses. It was, it was male work. He refuses. Boss won't kick them off the job. It's a problem. We have a scab situation here. Workers struck on the spot. On the spot. They enforced their union shop with everyday direct action. Incredible, incredible uh, experience. The book to read is Wobblies on the Waterfront by my friend Peter Cole. You won't regret reading it. Um, so hopefully that's a little bit of a, a, a taste um, of, of where we can go. Um, and amazingly, it's protected. Section 9 of the Act, Section 9 of the National Labor Relations Act, talks about certification, talks about recognition. Here's your bargaining agent, right? But thankfully, Section 7, it says that our activity as fellow workers sticking together and fighting with our boss, it's protected. It doesn't say we have to be in a certified or recognized unit. We have almost the full swathe of rights that our brothers and sisters in collective bargaining agreements have, or the certified or recognized units have, to be more precise. Right, so that means, uh, for example, um, except for a couple things. For example, we don't have the ability legally, supposedly, to make the boss bargain with us, but any, all the unionists in this room know that the boss isn't bargaining with you because of a duty to bargain. Mm -hmm. The boss bargains with you if you have the power to make him or her uh, bargain with you, and all of that um, uh, uh, activity to get there, right? You know, fighting, you know, using direct action tactics, communicating with your coworkers, having meetings, wearing your union pins, strikes itself, all protected without certification or recognition. So there is a way very clearly defined in current jurisprudence to support this approach of solidarity unionism that Stott and I have been um, talking about. 